The Princess of Wales, 42 years old and now in treatment for cancer, telling the world in an emotional statement. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family. The cancer discovered after abdominal surgery in January. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. The palace won't reveal the type or stage of cancer or how long the treatment will last, saying the princess has a right to medical privacy. In most cases, preventative or adjuvant chemotherapy lasts three to six months. Kensington Palace says Kate started her treatment in late February. It has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. Many hoping that by bravely opening up, the princess could raise awareness and help others. The Princess of Wales' brave decision to publicly talk about her cancer diagnosis will no doubt have an incredible effect all around the world, not only for people who are suffering from cancer, but for those who may be not recognising the signs and symptoms of cancer. And I think this is going to be her enduring legacy throughout her life. As cancer patients are being increasingly diagnosed at a younger age. One of the things that we have been most concerned about is this rise in cancers uh, that we would not normally expect to occur in someone, especially under the age of 50. Experts stress early detection is key. The Princess of Wales sending a message to her fans around the world and those who may be facing their own cancer battles. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, Please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. The Princess of Wales will return to public duties once her medical team gives her the OK. Meantime, Kensington Palace says that she's in good spirits and focused on making a full recovery. Hoda, Savannah. All right, Kelly, thank you. We want to turn now to NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Tara Narula. Good morning to you. Good morning. I've said, never heard of preventative yeah. chemotherapy until Kate made this announcement. What mm -hmm. is it and under what kind of circumstances would you advise that? I mean, it's not really a medical term. We tend to use the term adjuvant chemotherapy. And this, the concept behind this is that it's typically used after an initial treatment, like surgery or radiation, in this case, surgery, because there may still be microscopic cancer cells circulating in your body that could essentially lodge somewhere and cause a recurrence in the future. So it's sort of the one-two punch. You take out what you can see with surgery and then you give the adjuvant chemotherapy after. It's given depending on the type of tumor, the stage, the health of the person. It's typically used for breast, colon, ovarian, or lung cancer and over a duration of about three to six so months. Is it general. the kind of chemotherapy that you take with a, like with a needle? Is it liquid or is it sort of like a tamoxifen that you swallow? follow a pill and it's, the, it's that kind of thing. It could be any of the above. So typically we do think of those IV infusions that would be yes. given in a hospital or an infusion center, but it could be a pill. And essentially it's any of the available chemotherapy agents that we use for any advanced cancer Just treatment. Just because it's preventative doesn't mean it's a lighter dose or a lighter course or any less hard than chemotherapy is? Co correct. So it may be a different duration and intensity, but these are the same drugs that carry the same potential toxicities. And when you think about side effects, we're talking about things like fatigue, uh, decreased appetite, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, bleeding, bruising, infections. And then Savannah, there's the long-term risks of chemo. We know there can be heart or cardiovascular complications, fertility issues. It can affect other organs. So, I mean, this is not a walk in the park when we say the term preventative it sounds light and fluffy but she may be going through a lot Difficult. this time while she's experiencing she's also i mean young she's like a younger Correct. person so how does that factor into how she will deal with this kind of thing well you think about somebody younger yeah. being able to maybe tolerate mm -hmm. it better if they don't have other health issues but certainly i mean she may be experiencing some of these side effects but i think this really raises awareness yeah. that young people can get cancer um, number mm -hmm. one number two that it can be silent i mean hers was discovered incidentally and that's why screening is so important mm -hmm. uh, for cancers, whether it's mammograms or mm -hmm. uh, colonoscopies, pap smears. So she goes through this course of chemotherapy. Hopefully that gives that level of assurance. And then I assume regular screenings for mm -hmm. quite a bit of time. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, I think obviously we, we just don't know yet what cancer it is and what the kind of prognosis is going to be. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed that it'll be the adjuvant. She'll get through it and then she'll recover. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Narula. Thank we you very much, it. Dr. Narula.
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.